Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sarah, if you're new here, I make a video once a week about makeup, skincare, beauty, and I like to really focus on using what I already have in my collection. So I do a lot of shop my stash videos, project panning, that kind of thing. So today I wanted to actually kind of start doing almost like an inventory type series. So I'm going to go through all of my eyeshadow palettes and try to kind of rank them or at least talk about some of my favorites and some that I use maybe less often and why, if that makes sense. So at the end of this video, let me know in the comments below if you like this style video and if you want to see me go through other categories of my makeup collection and kind of rank those as well. I know the beginning of the year, even though we're halfway through February now, is kind of a time when people take stock of their collections and do inventory videos. My collection's not super big, so I didn't feel the need to kind of do that. Plus, you get to see my whole collection every other month pretty much during the Shop My Stash videos. So, but I thought I would go through eyeshadow palettes because I don't think I've specifically talked about all of those before. So if you want to see all of my eyeshadow palettes and how I rank them and feel about them, then just keep watching. So first, I'll kind of give you an overhead shot of all of the eyeshadow palettes that I will be talking about today. There is a total of 17. And just as a caveat, I'm only doing eyeshadow palettes that have six eyeshadows or more. So I won't be talking about or ranking like my e.l.f. quads or my Natasha Denona mini palettes. Um, I just felt like those are just kind of so small and specific that it's hard to really rank and compare them to bigger palettes. So those are not going to be included, so it'll just be the bigger palettes. So I also have a few other caveats or exceptions for a few of the palettes in my collection. The first two are these two palettes from Makeup Revolution. One is the Rachel palette from the Friends collaboration, and one is the Go For A Chat palette from the Love Island collaboration. And if I'm being honest, I do not like the quality or how the shadows perform in either one of these palettes. I just think, I mean, you can see on both of them, like I've really tried to use them and this, they look like this because you have to like dig, like even if I use my finger, I've got to like dig my finger in there and really pack it on and then it's just dry and flaky. They just honestly don't make good eyeshadows. Like I'm sorry to make a revolution, but they just don't. I like their face products, like I've liked a foundation I've had from them, concealers I've had from them I've always liked, but the eyeshadow formula is just not it. So I won't be ranking these, although I guess if I was, I would kind of say they're my least favorite, but I did buy them because I do absolutely love the show Friends and absolutely love Love Island. So I think actually what I'm gonna do, because I have pulled these into my everyday makeup drawer a number of times, trying to give them a chance. The Friends one is in my makeup drawer currently because I wanted to try and use some of the pinks for like Valentine's Day. And it just, they make me frustrated when I use them. But I don't wanna get rid of them because of the nostalgia. So I think what I'm gonna do is actually pull these out of my collection and put them in like my memory box that I have. So this isn't really a declutter video and I'm not decluttering these. I just kind of don't think I'm really gonna get use out of them, but I don't wanna get rid of them if that makes sense. So those two kind of not really gonna be including necessarily in the ranking. And then the other one I'm not really, I don't think I'm gonna include is my Urban Decay Ultimate Basics. I mean, I can say a lot of good things about it, Get that brush out of here but honestly I just use this as like a filler palette for a lot of looks so if I need a really specific matte because these are all matte except for this light shade up here which is a little bit of a satin finish but everything else is matte so it's kind of like if I'm doing a look and the palette I'm using doesn't quite have the right shade of brown or I want something with a little more of like a gray tone I pull this out and kind of supplement if that makes sense so I guess that would be my way of kind of rating this is, you know, I wouldn't necessarily put it as like at the top of my favorite palettes or at the bottom, but I think for the purpose that I have it, it works really well. All of these mattes in between just work really well as like crease blending shades if you need something more specific. And this has really held up over time. I don't think they sell the large version of this anymore, but you can get mini versions. So yeah, I don't necessarily think I can rank this 
in comparison to my other palettes, but I do have it. It's pretty high on my list of one that I use often and will keep for a long time. And my final two palettes that kind of have an exception right now are my two newest palettes, and I just feel like I can't really rank them in comparison to my other palettes that I've had in my collection longer because I just haven't owned these for very long and I honestly haven't used them a ton, so I don't have full thoughts. The first is the Sahara palette from Alter Ego. I mean, my first impression of this is that I love this. This is right up my alley. This is supposed to be a dupe for the Natasha Denona Biba palette, which is why I bought it. I love my mini Biba palette, like love. That's my favorite of my mini Natasha Denona, but the large palettes from her are just so expensive. And I don't know if she's reformulating or repackaging right now. I just feel like a lot of her palettes have not been in stock anymore. And I've always been interested in the larger Biba. So I saw that Alter Ego had this one and it's very similar and like a fraction of the cost. This is like 20 or $25. Which also, I feel like that could be a conversation starter in the comments. Let me know how you feel about brands duping high-end makeup. I know some people I see online don't like it because they think it's kind of stealing like creative ideas and reusing them and blah, blah, blah. But then other people are like, yeah, but not everybody can afford like a Natasha Denona palette that's $120. So this is a good option. And obviously I bought it, so I'm kind of okay with dupes. But yeah, I'm wearing it today and I really like it so far. But again, I've only been able to wear this maybe two or three days since I've had it. So I can't really rank it too well in comparison to my other palettes. And the same is true of my ColourPop Twilight palette. I did get my hands on this. I know there was a lot of drama and controversy around this entire collection from ColourPop. I do think they're restocking it though. So if you wanna sign up for that notification list, you can go on their website and do that. But again, this, I literally have used this one time. And I mean, it's a pretty specific color palette, much more cool tone than I would normally wear. A lot like the greens and blues are not my everyday go-to color and it's a lot of the sparkle and shine. So I've worn it once for like a night out and I generally liked the look I created, but it was kind of I don't want to say boring, but I definitely stayed on the neutral side. I didn't go into the greens or blues. So I want to play around this, with this a little more before I kind of have full thoughts on it. But in general, I do like the ColourPop shadow formulation. So with those palettes out of the running for an actual ranking, that leaves 12 palettes for me to rank from 1st to 12th. So 12th will be last place. But again, I don't hate any of my palettes. Obviously, if I did, I wouldn't even keep them in my collection. I would declutter them. So the rankings are just kind of based on how often I use it. When I use it, do I absolutely love the looks I create? Does it allow for versatile looks, more than one look, and the color story and how I kind of feel like that plays into my everyday life. So let's start with the palette that I currently have in last place. Again, last place sounds so negative, but I do still like all of my palettes. It is the Mini Warm Wishes palette from Sigma. My packaging is a little dirty, but I love the packaging. It's glittery, it's solid, it's got a magnetic closure. And here's what the palette looks like on the inside. It's really pretty, but I feel like this is such a specific look. But this is, I mean, pretty much like the title said, it's a very warm, neutral mini palette. I do feel like I like the looks that I create with this, but I can only do so much at the end of the day because it is only six pans. And I mean, it has a nice variety. This blending shade is pretty spot on, perfect for what I like. And then the three glitters I like. These two colors, however, as different as they look on camera, once you get them on the eye, they're pretty similar. So that's kind of a bummer. And then I also feel like, I think it's the, the gold shade flicker. I do feel like it could be a little more pigmented. It's a little stiff and like, it looks pretty on the finger, but it just kind of, it's not as like opaque as I would want when you pack it on, if that makes sense. So 
I like the looks I create with this, but I do feel like it's pretty specific, warm look only, and there's only so many varieties I can do with this color combination. So this is why it's number 12. Number 11, I also haven't used this palette a ton, but I do really like it so far. It's the Naked Urban Decay Mini Wild West palette. So again, not a ton of looks you can create with this, but I do feel like, especially these two colors, add a lot of interest and can really punch up a look. You can definitely create a neutral everyday look with these colors, but if you want to add a little bit of interest or a pop of color, you have the teal and then even this kind of orangey, orangish cream shade can add a little bit too as either a crease shade or inner corner and just add some interest. So I do really like this and I think it's a fun way to incorporate a more wearable color into my looks occasionally. Next is another Sigma mini palette and it is the Sigma Enchanted mini palette. This is a seven pan palette and I really, when I first got this, I loved it. But I think since I've gotten it, now that I own other Sigma palettes and different palettes in general, this has kind of fallen in the rankings because again, it's a pretty specific color story with the pinks and purples. This shade in the middle, Metamorphosis, is very interesting though. It did kind of break on me though, so that's disappointing. You can see where like I really had to like press that middle in, but it's a really pretty like duochrome topper, but I will say again, Sigma shadows, sometimes I just have trouble with getting the actual pigmentation. I don't know if that's really gonna show, it's this one. So it's a really pretty topper, there we go, you can see that shift. But I mean, that's me packing it on with like multiple swipes. So that's definitely something I've noticed with the Sigma shadows, they're pretty hit or miss. Some of them work absolutely fantastically. Like I love this shade at the end, budding, great. Works really well for a shimmer every time. Their mattes always perform really well for me. So it's really just the shimmers that I struggle with. But I do like this one. I just feel like it creates a unique look, but because of that, I can only use it for certain looks or times. So this is definitely not really an everyday palette that I can use. Like this would be kind of a little too much to wear for like a work day, but I do like having it for weekends and if I want to do something a little more fun and use that topper shade especially. So that is why I ranked it kind of lower in my collection. My next palette, so this would be number nine in the rankings, is my Milani Luminoso palette. I use this a ton in the spring and summer. It's just so pretty. It's got all of those peach and pink shades that you would want. I think, did I use this recently? Or like, I feel like you could use this for the color of the year, Peach Fuzz. This would be a great palette to create some eye looks around that concept. And again, like the other ones that I have ranked slightly lower, it's just not as versatile. I can really only create the peachy pink look. There is this gold shade, but when this is used on top of any of these, it definitely still makes the whole look pull more on that orange or pink side and not necessarily browns or neutrals. But I do think the quality of these shadows is pretty good. And again, you know, the Milani Luminoso blush is so iconic that it's really fun to have an eyeshadow palette to go with it. And I definitely get a lot of use out of it, I will say. And I think they only sell this at Walmart, if I'm not mistaken, still. So you can still find it there. I think, but yeah, I really enjoyed this palette, but because of the pretty specific color story, I have it ranked as number nine. For a very similar reason, which I don't know if you're sensing the theme of my lower ranked palettes, my Profusions Mauves palette is a similar concept to me. It's a very, very specific color story, straight up pink. The only color in here that's not straight up pink is this opal shade, but again, when you're using it with any other color in this palette, it just still makes the whole look pull very pink. One thing I do love about this palette, which I did do a video on this last year, is that these pans are quite large, so I actually can fit a blush brush in here and use a lot of these as blushes. So I do love that it can be a multi-purpose palette. I have pulled this out and have used this a number of times this month for Valentine's Day and pink looks. So it works really well for that. But again, that's really the only look I can create with this is a really pink or kind of more on that red 
toned side of the spectrum look. So again, not something I would necessarily be able to use every single day long term, but really like it. Great value for the money. Again, you can also find this one at Walmart or you can order it online, but it's a good value for the money and I really enjoy having this in my collection. So number seven in my collection, so we're getting towards the middle of the pack, is my Sigma New Mod palette. I know I've spoken about this before. These two shadows did come busted in the packaging, so I pressed them back in there, which is why they're a little janky looking. But this palette really grew on me. I bought it on sale, I think, Black Friday. And honestly, like at first, it, it looks like it's going to be a really pink purple palette, like when you just glance at it. But as I used it, I realized it definitely can pull a lot more neutral if you want as well. These colors down here can definitely take you more on that brown or gray toned root. And then some of the colors over here, you know, you can create definitely a more neutral look with a pop of color. And then you've got the pinks in the middle. And then this shade is also kind of a duochrome avant-garde. Again, that's my same issue with the um, Enchanted one. It's so hard to pick up. You've really, it's so stiff. You've really got to get in there. And honestly, I'm going to swatch it next to the other duochrome shade. They're pretty similar. This one pulls maybe slightly more pink. So this is the one from the new mods. That's the one from the Enchanted. So they're pretty similar in look at the end of the day, but they look really pretty. Like they look so wet and shiny and I love the shift. It's just really hard to pack on there. And especially as a topper, once you've already got a base look on and then you're trying to get this on top and you've really got to pack it on, it's really hard to then not mess up the base as well, if that makes sense. But this has really grown on me. I use this a lot more than I initially thought I would because I can create a variety of looks from it. So that's kind of what is going to start happening with the palettes that I'm ranking higher is that I can create more than one color story look from the palette. So like if I were to travel with this for a week or two, like I would be fine because I could create so many different looks. I could go neutral every day. I could do something a little more fun for nighttime, go smoky or dark if that's what I'm feeling. So that's that's definitely why this is kind of going more in the middle. But again, the caveat with the Sigma shadows is that they are hit or miss. So that's why I, I don't have it ranked higher. So next, right in the middle of the pack is my final Sigma palette. I have the mini ambiance palette. This I absolutely love. I believe I used this palette when I did the latte trend look. So I will link that video below. And again, even though this is a mini palette, I feel like I can get versatile looks from it. It definitely can be more neutral, but then just because of the colors, like we've got some cooler tones down here. We've got some warmer tones down here. These colors are different enough that they look different on the eye. This is much darker. This pulls more of like a brown, like a brick color. And then this is a little more of that orange shade. And then again, the shimmers in this are pretty good. These two work really well. This one I kind of do have to dig into a little more. It just feels a little stiff. Again, I don't know why some of their shadows do that. But once you pack it on, it's pretty. Like that's, that's a really pretty shade. So this I have in the middle. It's, I like that it's small too. It's easy to grab and go. I can pull it out and kind of know what look I'm going to create pretty quickly, but it can create more than one type of look. So we're getting towards the top of the collection now, my favorites. And if you've watched any of my shop, my stash videos, you might be already able to tell which palettes are definitely in my top and have been in my top for a very long time. Number five in my collection, it's my ABH Modern Renaissance palette. This was the first ABH palette I ever bought for myself, so it does have some nostalgia attached to it. And again, similar to that new mod palette, it looks like on first glance, it's going to pull super pink. And especially because of the outside packaging being pink, and like that's just kind of how it was marketed and a lot of the looks I remember. But this can pull very neutral as well because of this section over here. 
So I love that I can pull this out and create just a really easy everyday look. I can create something a little more pink and then we can go and use some of the color if you want something a little more interesting. I think this is a really interesting color story and I use this all the time and it's just gonna stay in my collection for as long as it keeps performing. I will say my ABH palettes are quite old at this point, but they work fine still. So I'm gonna keep using them. Number four is my ABH Sultry palette. Absolutely love the packaging on this. I wish they still made this one. I think they did a mini one that they have, but I wish they still did this big one. Also love this color story. This is definitely more of like a glam, as it says, sultry look. I used this to create my kind of holiday slash New Year's Eve look recently. So I'll link that video below. But so many of the colors are so shimmery and just like, I don't know. I just think they all look so pretty and just work so well. I love all of them. And this is definitely like my type of color story when it comes to a palette. The only reason I don't have it ranked as like number one or two is because there are so many shimmers in here that for my life, realistically, that's not an everyday look that I'm creating. I'm doing like even the look I'm wearing right now is a little glam for going to work in my opinion, like in an office setting. So I love this to pull out for like date nights, special occasions, like going to a wedding, perfect for something like that, a holiday look. And I just think it's actually really versatile. And I, again, I don't, I haven't used these matte shades over here as often. I use the black occasionally, but it's just interesting that they've included these as well. So it kind of adds more variety to the palette in general. So yeah, so this is number four in my collection. So now we are ready for the top three. Number three in my collection might have some mixed reactions, but I personally love this one. It's the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude Palette. And again, just for my personal life and everyday activity, which honestly is going to work in an office job, this is an absolutely fantastic palette for that. This is 100% my type of color story. I know that like the nude look doesn't seem to offer that much of a variety, but I still think I can get different looks out of this. I mean, I can do a fully matte look with this if I want because of the color variety of the mattes. I can do a more pink leaning look because we've got some of these more like salmon colors and pink shimmers. I can go neutral because we've got the neutral cooler tones. I can go kind of more brown and neutral because we've got these browns over here and darker shimmers. My only complaint is that, and I've seen a couple people in the reviews, I do feel like some of these shades, this, 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 look very similar on the eye, this matte and this matte. So it's just something to be aware of. But for me personally, even though this is an expensive palette, I know I will get a ton of use out of it. And I already have. The first month I had it, I wore it almost every single day and tried to just use every shade in here at least once, which I think I have. So definitely one of my favorites so far, even though I've only owned this for a couple of months, but I have pulled it out so many times. There's even been days when it's it's not in my everyday makeup drawer and I'll still go into my eyeshadow drawer and pull this out because I just feel like using it that day. So that says a lot to me. Number two in my ranking is my ABH Norvina palette. This is another palette I really wish they would bring back. This is so good and just such an interesting color story to me. It's much brighter than the modern Renaissance and I feel like I, I like the layout of this one too. I like that the bottom row is all matte. The top row is the shimmers. I feel like I can get a variety of looks out of this. You can obviously go like way more pink. You can go purple. We can go neutral. We can go smoky. So I just absolutely love this palette. And again, kind of similar to the I Need a Nude palette. There have been so many days where even if this is not in my everyday makeup drawer for the month, I will still reach in and pull this out. But yeah, I just really, really love this palette but I just always love the looks I create with this. I feel like more inspired when I pull this one out because of the color variety and story. So that is why I have this ranked as number two in my collection. And last but not least is an oldie, but a goodie. I think you can still buy this one at Ulta. It is the ABH Soft Glam. This, I feel like as boring as some people might think it is, this is like me in a palette. 
This is absolutely like an everyday look that I could wear for a very long time and be happy with how it turned out. Oh my gosh, I just realized I had a little bit of shadow up there, probably from touching all the palettes and them being messy. Apologies. This, I absolutely love the color story. It, again, it definitely is like a variety of looks I can create. We've got like the more neutral looks over here. We've got pinks, we've got some darker colors. It can go gold, like this gold and these um, are really pretty. And I definitely like the name Soft Glam is exactly what it is. It can become a very glamorous high-end look, but it also can be a really nice everyday look that's not too over the top. I would feel comfortable wearing this eyeshadow palette for work every day, and I do. I do pull this out quite a lot. It goes into my everyday makeup drawer a lot. My favorite shades that I have the most dip in in here are definitely this rose pink, the glistening shade, I use the tempura shade a lot for blending and cleaning up edges. It works really well for that. And then yeah, all the mattes just blend super easy and I've used all of them a number of times. And I just think I always love the looks that I create with this. And it's a versatile palette without being like overly dramatic or overly colorful, but I feel like I can get a variety of looks out of this. And again, it's a palette where if I you know, was traveling for a week or two and brought this, I would be totally happy and comfortable just having this. I don't think I would miss anything from it. So this is number one in my collection. So that is me ranking all of my larger eyeshadow palettes. I would love to know your thoughts below on if you have any of these palettes and how you feel about them. I don't really have my eye on buying any eyeshadow palettes in the near future, but you know, there's so much makeup coming out all the time, so you never know what might pop up. But I hope this was helpful. I know a lot of these palettes you can't necessarily get anymore, so I'm sorry about that, but I will try to link the ones below that are available still for purchase. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Let me know if you wanna see me do other categories in my collection, and I will see you all in next week's video. Bye.